everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I am from OML Embroidery and over there is Dawn manning all of the cameras and all the computer effects. So say hi Dawn. Hello. There we go. His signature hello. So welcome, welcome everybody. Um, I see we have people from all over the world, which is so exciting. Misha. Hi, Misha. Hello to everyone. Uh, shout out to Lynn. This is her first sew along. She just sent me a picture of her machine set up. And uh, this was very exciting for her. Other newbies, if you're new, give yourself a shout out. Let us know that you're new. And uh, hello from Mama Brown. Mama Brown. Hello, Mom. Happy Thanksgiving. Sorry we can't uh, be with you for Thanksgiving, but no, we love you so much. I'm sending you your son. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> to social distance, <laughs> but I'm sending you your son. So have a good time with that. So, Mama Brown, everyone's saying hi to Mama Brown. So we've got people from all over the world. This is awesome. I so love it. this is what we're going to be stitching today. And I love this. <laughs> I love this design. It's not necessarily a flower, but look, if you put something in the middle of it, it looks, it, like looks it looks amazing and it's kind of like not everybody noticed that it was coffins because it's kind of has a dresden look to it and i thought it was really groovy really fun to do this will also be a lesson in connections so there's two appliques in this the background here which I'm going to use this groovy green fabric, which is awesome. And then it's the coffins and then of course the back of it. Um, but I have a surprise for everyone. You guys would be so proud of me. I have a black bobbin Yay. and I have a green bobbin loaded. So wow. I two, two, wow. because there's two here. So that the back looks as good as the front now i have the green one loaded i'll prove it to you guys in a minute but let's put this here so this is going to be my coffin fabric because it you know it's a shape it's not necessarily a coffin it's a dresden ish shape it's pretty close and i'm going to use this really 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 cute fabric for the back isn't that a adorable i want to fussy cut these with my scanning cut because i think that would be adorable i don't know what i do with them but i still want to fussy cut it and then i have my batting lynn hopefully i gave you some batting i might have yeah, forgotten okay good Whew. oh yeah i did because debbie mitchell cuts it up nicely for me before we get started, I wanted to throw some ideas out at you. Now, the the file on omlembroidery.com comes with two sizes, this bigger size and the smaller size I'm going to stitch out today. But for the larger size, I thought fabric like this would look fantastic. So I could get a couple of pumpkins in there. And you'd have to fussy cut it because if you put it, you know, to suit that one, then look, these ones are going to be like this. And I don't think that would look as good. So I was thinking make it dimensional. So cut out, I think it's like a um, five by two piece or something like that and cut them all out and then place them so the pumpkins are all going the same way. And I think with that little bit of an effort, I think that would look awesome. Oh, and, yeah, it would yeah, take oh, it right to the next level. Right to the next yeah. level. And it's easy enough to do. But look at this one. Now, again, the top and bottom is going to be fine. But these other ones are going to look different. So you could do the same thing with this and have all the stripes going you know, either across, which would be really cool, or up and down. But yeah, think outside the box on it. And if you have 
you know, directional fabric. Um, I think it would look great. I love this. I love this with all the different pumpkins and bats and witch hats. So that's my idea for the day. And I think it would be dreamy, especially if this fit, you know, cutting along the lines here couldn't be easier. Two pumpkins and cutting along the lines, that would be fun. So remember, you can fussy cut if you need to. And I think it would add a whole lot to it. Esther says you still need Red Hots and peanuts in with that candy corn. Yeah, <laughs> we're kind of off the she Red says Hots. That every week. I know. Maybe we should do it. <laughs> um, we have what are these sweet, sweet tarts? tarts? We're not actually candy people. We only eat candy when Lynn comes over for a new movie night. Um, so, and you can only eat so many of these things. They're like pure. They're pretty. I want to do my nails like them, but. Um, they're sugary, so we don't really yeah, need eat to them eat them. 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 Oh. Nah. You don't know which one it is either, do you? No. Uh. That's okay. It's only <laughs> you that eats them. So we're going to do the 5x5 five five fits in a 5x7 hoop. And it's similar, but a little bit different. So let's go ahead. We're going to go to McDreamy, and I'm going to show off my bobbin. So over to McDreamy, Don. We have a great view of McDreamy's McDreamy. Up. I forgot to talk about my nails. They're the same as last week, but you know. So look, you ready for this? La, da, 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 da. Neon green. So the back of my design is going to look as good as the front. I figured I should smarten up a little bit because I'm teaching Lynn and she's like, why don't you change the bobbin? <laughs> Well, I never, re yeah, I, I mean, yeah, so I figured I should start doing it as much as possible and trying my darndest to remember. Um, I forgot to wind a new one. That's okay, Lynn. That's okay. You could uh, do it after or do another one. I think you're going to want to do another one. So let's get started. The first step is placement. So let's go ahead and do the placement. I have I have black right now, and that's so you guys can see it. So let's stitch out the placement, and we're gonna be placing down just batting because we have some applique to deal with. And uh, that color looks weird. Why does it look weird? Does it make a difference which way does it make what? Does it make a difference which way the grain of the fabric goes? No, not for this. No. If it's really stretchy, you have to be careful, but in general, no. So, this is, it's smaller, it's for a cup, but if you make a small one and a big one, or do the single coffin, it's really cute. Um, these ones turned out just as nice. So, I'm going to stitch that down. And then we're gonna trim it. So, so far the steps are just as normal. And when I create designs, I like to do all the applique if possible, and then do the, the design. So twice to stitch it down so we get a nice hold. And that should be awesome. And we're looking good. Betty Turner says, don't send me creamy into shock with two positive. I know, I know. I think the bobbin is showing through a little bit, tension-wise, because he's probably protesting somewhat. Okay, back to the desk, Don. Yeah, because that's why I said it looks kind of green. And it does to me a little bit. So, see, it's perfect size for, you know, a little bowl. It's cute. I kind of like it. Um, the bigger one allows you to do more detail, but uh, I think a few of these going the wrong way for my duckbill scissors. You um, always do. I know. I don't know why. Lynn pointed that out. She's very observant. That she always automatically starts going this way, and she's not even using the duckbill scissors. And I always want to go the other way. Not sure why. There's no rhyme or reason, but... 
if you're using the duckbill scissors, you might as well use them properly, right? Mm -hmm. So I try. Um, if you've ever poked your applique scissors through your WSS, then you'll know. Cause yes, it, yes, I yeah, it kind of ruins the whole thing, doesn't it? It changes the tension and stuff's going to be out of line and... Yeah, pretty annoying. Pretty Alicia annoying. says a five by seven size is a great size for a candle. Yeah, perfect for that. Perfect for that. I'm trying to be accommodating to as many people as I can. And for the people who digitize, um, check out both of them because I want you guys to note that I did not take the big one and just shrink it down into the small, small one, there's way more to it. Um, this would be a hockey puck right now, even though I did it with the um, working files. So, And there's great connections in this guy, so it's awesome. So there you go, close enough. Kind of looks like a snowflake. I had thoughts about making snowflakes. So um, let's go back to the machine, Don. Dreamy's up. All right, so for this one, this is going to be our placement. So we know we're going to place the triangles first, which is kind of like the background. It's kind of like the background. Oh, by the way, Bjorn's right here, sticking to his Velcro so we don't have any troubles. Now, on the small one and on the big one, you could do each triangle differently and i think it would look really good with just bright fabrics behind it so if you notice how well it's connecting for us um the tack down stitches are separate so you can place the fabric separately if you're wondering why i didn't just copy and paste and connect that's why, because I think it would look really good. And you know what? You could do it for all of the uh, coffins too, but it might get a little busy. So here's my background fabric. And I'm going to place it on there. There is no chicken today. Um, conveniently, this is a charm square, so it's five by five. Not an actual charm square, but I cut it to be five by five and make sure we're all covered. I love these little spider dudes. On the bigger one, you could fussy cut a little bit, but let's let this tack down. So any questions by anyone so far? There shouldn't be, pretty basic. So we're gonna put a trim in there, so that way you can do them one at a time, um, which would be helpful. Just shut off the sound on the television and put on the computer sound. Now I'm happy. Okay, good. We love happy yeah, people. Yeah, I got a whole lot of lag on mine for the what what I'm seeing on the iPad for what I'm doing. Well, so you know what's weird is what you're doing right now live and what I'm seeing before it even gets broadcast. By the time it makes it to the computer, it's lag. Yeah. That's weird. weird. That's kind of weird, but yeah, I don't know. Just the way it goes. Sometimes it's laggy. So one at a time. Uh, I know it's a little trimmy right there, but that's okay. I just decided to put one piece of fabric down so I can have all the greens matching. Oh, I was hoping to get a little spider in there. If I really took the time, even though they're kind of small, this, this would be good for scraps too. Keep all your scraps. Um, I could have fussy cut them, but I think that would be a lot easier to do on the bigger one. But anyways, we're getting there. So this forms the background and it looks good so far. Yeah, if you um, have any questions, it might get missed in the... Um, chat then go to omlembroidery.com or sorry go to facebook the group 
OML Embroidery University, and it's good to ask your questions there. So, Don, can we go back to the desk? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I whacked the camera with the hoop. Off to a good start. So, also with it being separate, I didn't want anyone to get confused because it would have gone around and done the shape of the coffin. So this makes it a little bit clearer. So let's carefully trim these guys out and I'm gonna trim out the middle as well. And um, we can put something else in there. So, cause I think a spider web plus a spider web. Uh, maybe, I don't know. So, okay, take your time with this. Look, I peeled back the coffin. Now you can see the coffin shape. And we're gonna trim it right to the line here because this is a satin stitch finish. And uh, we want it to look good. So, okay, see this is a lot easier than it would have been. I'm just gonna peel back the coffins like this. So as always, you know what? Take your time trimming. I'm having just slight difficulties with the um, big old duckbill on the inside one when I'm cutting, but nothing huge. Make sure you don't catch too much of that uh, batting in there. So this one, let's do it. Seems like a lot of trimming, but um, it's worth it. It's fantastic. So Saturdays and Sundays, I love the weekends. Isn't that amazing? I love the weekends. Saturday morning, we bounce out of bed and we go, yeah, we're going to stitch something. It's so exciting. And this is such a delightful stitch out that it's fun. And the bigger one is fun as well. But I'll be uh, pointing out all the details. I should probably do the coffins in green maybe I don't know I haven't decided so Lynn are you keeping up she's probably trimming away she's <laughs> uh almost a pro at trimming applique she is getting there a little bit difficult the way we were getting her to do it for Tuesdays because <laughs> there was no room at the desk oh she's gonna be she's not gonna want to do it anymore she got all the room over there I I know she has it on her um, coffee table and it's one of those kind of coffee tables that lift up so she can move it so hopefully it's not too vibrating up there on it but we have one too because we like Lynn's so much and I think it'll be fine for Mickey I wouldn't put a McDreamy on it but a Mickey yep Oh, look how pretty this looks already once I get the green now you could leave the center the fabric that um, you have I'm not going to because it does stitch out a spider web but if you have spider web material like I do you could leave it and skip the spider web just just fine and then you just have green and it will kind of tie it in it would look good too it would definitely look good too so, but I'm going to cut it out, cut it out, and I'm going to use a scrap of something for it. Oh, does that look good? Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, Don, back to the machine, please. Back to McDreamy. McDreamy's up. Who is my brother, Dream Machine 2? Now, the next applique is that centerpiece that I was talking about. So let's get that stitched out. I'm gonna go over here for a sec. And I'm back. I'm just gonna take a little look through my scraps and see if I have something good for it. Yeah, I do. How about this? Boop. Just put that in there, just gray. And you know what? I could probably position it so I could get a star or two in it. And we don't want any applique chicken today. So I, I think... You cut off both of them right there. Will I? 
It's hard to see around the camera, man. Yeah, part uh, of the orange one, part of the white one. That's fine. Part is fine. So, let's stitch it down. And then we'll do a quick trim. I think I'll trim this at the machine. Because it's only... I don't usually, but... It's just little. So, I got the white star in. What are you on about? What? You did. Yeah. Good job. Why are you telling me I'm not going <laughs> to make it? I made it. <laughs> I can give you a hard Jeez. time. Jeez. Back seat stitcher over there. Sometimes. <laughs> it's going to be covered up by a spider anyway, so I wasn't that worried. I was more interested in just the gray. So this, is a, this little one is a good scrap buster. And... A great candle mat. Just a little bit of Halloween to brighten up your day. Or old-fashioned stitching with a little twist on it. So it's coffins. I don't know. I just liked it. I thought it was awesome. Um, the single coffin one that I made uh, is really cute. That's just a little bit of zigzags just to hold it down. And... Our very last applique, it's going to outline it for us. And it's the coffins. So we're ready for coffins. Awesome. I think it looks good. The single one that I did, I have been working on learning about quilt stitches. And I did some hand-done quilt stitches on it. And it looks absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful so i'm working you guys are learning and i'm always learning too to come up with uh you know stuff that i want to learn i'm i'm gonna guess that you guys want to learn it too so that's what i've been doing so it was kind of experimental and i've worked hard to develop my swirlies that i'm not generally good with so we're going to keep it bright, man. We're going to keep it bright. And we're going to put down this really, it's actually really bright. Really bright, but gorgeous orange. Now I'm just feeling to make sure that there's no fabric chicken. I'm going to move it up a little bit. All right, we are good. So let's stitch this down with some nice connections. And I, while it's stitching, I can see what's going on. Uh, duck build scissors with the large side against the stabilizer. Yes, I can explain that on the next cutting. It, uh, the duck bill, the large size is um, smooth so you won't stab anything and like go through your stabilizer. It's lovely. I've never had any problems. So we have to do a little bit of a center cut. You could leave that if you um, wanted to easily enough. See, it looks like a flower. Boop, 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 the little dance. Don, back to the desk. Desk's up. Your desk looks very halloween -y. It's very, I got Halloween-y stuff. Well, I grabbed my scrap pile, so it's kind of all over the place. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut this a little bit smaller. And Plus then... Neat connection suit. Yeah, isn't that cool? The bigger one has better ones. Actually, the next thing we're going to stitch out has even better connections. Um, it's how you should be doing it. It's how all designs w should be. So I'm going to leave that orange. That is a lovely size scrap. There's my purple. And now, a little bit fiddly maybe, but now we're going to reveal all that green inside everything. I think it's a lovely design. I mean, you could layer everything over if you wanted to, like do the whole thing green with the orange over. I don't think that would hurt anything. Um, you just got to watch that it's not too thick. Isn't that cool? I like it. 
I like it a lot, Don. It's like awesome. It I'm going to have to get my sharp scissors out to do this center bit. Hey, you won't have to give it, and you don't have to give it to Lynn because she has one. She has one. Or will have one. I don't think Mom's gonna want it, so I want to keep it as a set, for sure. I want to keep it as a set because I have the big one, and then I have this one. So a little bit of trimming, but it's not difficult to do. It's easy. And this is nice and puffy right there, so that should be easy too. You got to make sure that you don't cut the gray, the center part to it. So I'll just be a little careful. And I know I missed the tops there. Whew, slide your scissors. 203 watching. 203. Well, it's an awesome design. I love it. And it's, uh, like I said, I don't know if everybody's going to realize their coffins maybe because they're in Halloween colors but it I was going to call it Dresden flower but I wasn't sure if that was misleading or not cuz it's not it's a Halloween flower or a coffin flower I decided maybe that will scare people away though I'm 118 likes too 118 likes you guys rock Thank you so much. Every little bit helps. Um, and of course, so tomorrow we are going to do an Anita Good Design and we're going to do uh, number two of the landscape silhouettes uh, pack. The first one, I, I, I just sit and look at it. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'm, I'm so happy with it. Um, the creations from people in the group were incredible. A lot of people played around with colors and did different things with it, different threads. There's um, The design lends itself to a lot of creativity, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I love mine. I'm going to kick it up a little bit for tomorrow, just so you know. I think I'm going to do blues. Nice. Just to, just to see. Just to see how it's going to look. Can I give it a different feel? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just see light to dark. I actually have another idea. I'm going to get my pointy scissors and very carefully, very, very carefully... My pointy scissors, these are really pointy. I generally don't use them. I love those ones. Yeah, it makes it a whole lot easier. And I kind of lifted it. you got to make sure you don't pull too much. But I kind of lifted it. If you don't feel like you could get this done without wrecking the whole thing, then just leave it. It looks fine with the orange, too. Doesn't matter. It's um, puffy now, but we're going to do a little spider web. So, sharp spider pointy scissors and duckbill or you know smoother trimming scissors lynn did not like the duckbill scissors at all she had a hard time with them and she's happy with you know just regular regular scissors well i think that's uh coming together guys so that's all the appliques, so let's go back to the machine. If you want to get a little more particular and cut in here, the little sharp scissors is what you need. I think I'm going to do that one just a little bit, just so I can show you guys how to do it. So you got to be careful. These are really sharp. But look, you can get right up to it. So, might take you a minute to do it. Of course, on the larger one, this is a little bit easier, but that's okay. Now, you just, you know, be careful about it. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I did a fairly good job. This one is a bit much, though. So, I'll trim it down very carefully. If you notice, every time I move the scissors forward, it gets caught in the fabric and that's why you don't want to use them say on this because look it it just goes straight through and you'll end up making a mess so good enough i'm happy with it 
Uh, Dawn, back to McDreamy, please. All right, we're looking nice and bright. So now this is the master of connections. It is going to do the spider web in the middle, and then it's going to connect to each uh, coffin and do a bat. And it's just delightful to watch. If you can stitch out the bigger one, it's got the same connections and it's awesome. Just something to learn from. This is this is what embroidery designs should be. Just all in one, minimal trims. I love it. So that looks even better with the spider web. I like it. I like it. And now you can hear McDreamy speeding up because he is doing the little spider. Which, he's the star, apparently. So, yeah, he's going crazy there. And I walk up and then start on my bats. So, it's going to do all of the black without stopping slowing down because the satin stitches are a little bit long cool ah, there's a little bit green showing on the edge so my bobbin is showing through a little bit but I'm gonna leave it because it makes it look like the bats are glowing can you see that Don I'm, I'm going to leave it. I think it's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, well, happy accidents. That I, I think that's a neat effect. Uh, I would never try to do it on purpose, but seeing how it's done. Oh, is everyone, like, freaking out because there's little fluffies everywhere? Apologies. Oh, the spider looks it, too. He doesn't like the... I had to make adjustments. I changed the bobbin to embroidery thread and I always use pre-wound. So they're a little bit different. But yeah, I'll <laughs> fix it. I'll fix it. My apologies. Yeah, I know. I know. The spider looks a little glowy green. Yeah, I kind of like it. It's random. Um, I mean, it doesn't hurt your machine to have the bobbin showing through. It's just generally not a good idea. I'm, I'm going to have to change the tension and fix it up a little bit, but I don't need to do it right now because I like it. And then for the rest of it, I will be matching the thread. So there we go. He just doesn't like it. Because I never do it. So, I'm sorry, McDreamy. And he says, oh, wow, I'm actually keeping up. Oh, what a girl. Good for you. Any other newbies? Um, if you haven't checked out Learn with Lynn, that's uh, Lynn got a new machine, and she's a newbie. She's been watching all the videos and the whole bit, and she got a machine. And welcome to our addiction, Lynn. And this is her first stitch out. Thank you for all the video lessons. Thank you, Lila. Lila is so incredibly creative. Okay, so the... Oh, okay, I gotta change thread. I was like, what the heck is this? We're gonna put a few designs on the coffins because it looks good and I'm gonna use purple. I could do black, I guess, but the outside's in black. Or I could do green, but then there's another line in green. So let's see how it looks in purple. Um, I don't think it'll be too busy. And it's candle wicking stitches, which I absolutely love. They add to it. And these are all connected too. Or they should be. This is my first time stitching this out, so let's see how it does. Go, McDreamy, go. So cute. I love the green and the orange. So it's going to take a few minutes. It's not going to be too bad. Let's see how that green's showing through. 
Oh, it is a little bit, but it's giving it that glow. This is such a cute design. I just ordered it and I can't wait to make one or many. Yeah, this is, um, Ellen, thank you very much. This is something that you can stitch out. And, you know, I'm always telling people when you are stitching out designs, watch them stitch. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn about it. That is basically how I started out, is by watching the professionals go to work sort of thing. So thank you, and I hope you guys love this design as much as I do. I am uh, I really, really like the bigger one, but this is adorable as well. Oh, so this is, love what this group does to help each other. We're very helpful. I stitch and you know, do digitizing classes on whatever you guys want. We're kind of, uh, oh, Brenda's new. Hello. Well, welcome. Um, kind of trying to guide people into different areas and it's all about inspiration and thinking outside the embroidery box. And that's what we do. And we couldn't do it without the mods. We couldn't do it without our mods. Yeah. Our mods are fantastic. And everyone in the group is very helpful. Yep. Um, the whole group, uh, we call it a gang. This is the OML gang. We have stickers and mugs and t-shirts to prove it. Um, we're a great bunch. And whatever you guys want to know what to do, uh, just ask. We can figure it out. So... Uh, Jill says, I try and watch as many stitch outs that I, I can. It's amazing what you can pick up. You'd be surprised. What I'm trying to do with this whole channel, and we're almost up to 600 videos, is um, show everyone the right way for designs to be stitching. And to show people who haven't done a mug rug, this is Lynn's first solo mug rug but she can do it. I know she can do it. So it's that confidence. And the group and the mods certainly portray that to everyone as well. And I think that's wonderful. It's Everything's positive. There's no negativity. There's no need for it. You know, a beginner does something and there's mistakes. Who cares? Who cares? It's taken me 65 years to Not quite so long <laughs> for me, but yes. Yes, we can be cool about it, right? <laughs> it was worth the rate, <laughs> the wait, yeah. Weekends are our thing. Uh, some people stitch along with me on Saturdays. It's usually something fun and, you know, mug ruggy or something like that. Um, but not always. Halloween-y, we got Christmas stuff. I like Christmas as much as I like Halloween, so we'll have fun doing different projects um some people grab their coffee and their ipad and sit comfortably and watch and then stitch it out afterwards so it's up to you guys what you do so you can personalize in any way that you want yep not so much on this one there really isn't any room but on the larger one like there is a big difference between the two right you could do uh i was thinking of like letters here or something i i didn't really think it through because once i did this design i'm like oh heck yeah i like it i like it i like it a lot um, this small one is cute and it's stitching out delightfully. I love candle wicking. These little purple things, they kind of spin around. It's a neat stitch. Yeah, it's, it's a neat one. Of all the groups I've tried, this one is best. Thank you, David Weaver. And did I see you were having coffee and eggnog for breakfast? Although it might not be. I don't know where you're from, so <laughs> it might not be breakfast. But it's breakfast here. Dawn, I think, is a little jealous. St 62 years for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite there yet, but we just want to keep this going. So what's the best way to keep this going? The answer is participate. 
so and it doesn't cost you guys anything the whole idea about this youtube channel if you're wondering why is she doing full classes and stitch alongs all the time why is she doing it for free well it's twofold one I want to provide the right education and learning for people that they're comfortable with. But also, I decided to take a really different approach and make it free for you guys. And YouTube pays me. So how do we accomplish that? Well, the first thing you do is watch the videos from beginning to end like the videos comment with a smiley face i mean like them if you like them S comment with a smiley face share it somewhere your own facebook start a pinterest something like that i shared it twitter pinterest and facebook twitter twitter pinterest and facebook well thank you so much for that don you're welcome all that helps Oh, save it into a playlist on your own channel. That helps as well. And what that does is the more attention you pay to the videos, the more YouTube notices. And uh, YouTube will start serving up the videos to people. And the more that happens, the better it is. So it's, it's really easy for everyone to participate. And I wanna keep this going because I am literally having the time of my life. I enjoy every video. So I'm gonna change color here because we have a little more decorative stitches and I hope they turn up well. Um, so that's it about the channel. That's why we're doing it. My personal goal that I have is to get up to 100,000 subscribers. Just, just because I think that would be awesome and help as many people as I can to feel confident and happy. The larger one is a multi-hoop project. I did not set it up as such. It is for the nine and a half by nine and a half hoop. Um, if you have software, you could possibly do it. It might be a little bit difficult though. How do we find your Facebook page? Mine is, uh, I'm sorry, I just heard McDreamy kinda crunch there a little bit, but maybe he slipped over one of the purples. Oh, I like that. I like that outline. That's cool. That's like a back stitch that I did. I just don't know why McDreamy clunked. So, Facebook page. I put up announcements and it's... I don't interact a whole lot on it. I try my best, but I often run out of time. Um, it's the group OML Embroidery University. Um, Facebook group and we do Wednesdays Tuesdays are for Lynn learn with Lynn and we're gonna keep that going for a, a little while and do different projects and different things with her teacher as many things as I can and oh yeah I heard that did you hear that Wednesdays we have digitizing and and it's a full oh see look what we had that's when it went clunk what did we have? a little it's a thread of pillar thread of pillar yep yeah, it is it's kind of like a millipede i am gonna go put that in beatrice's says, i love learning with lynn and her laugh is contagious yeah absolutely <laughs> i know because she's so she giggled so much last time because she was so proud of herself um i am gonna take that thread of pillar and i'm gonna put it in beatrice's room just so you know these are the things i do don't you agree don yes she she will think that's really funny <laughs> maybe not but it would be fun i'll tell sam sam will think it's fun Okay, we're almost ready for the final stitches now. 
Oh, that looks better. Yeah, it was getting kind of thin. That was a pretty good threaded pillar. It was. So, okay. Now, the next step is the shape of the design. So, exactly like the first one. And that would mean that we are going to put our fabric down for the back. And what we're going to do is put it face down. So the back is going to look just as pretty. And I know I said I was going to use other fabric, but I figured I might as well use this fabric. Now, if you want to take the hoop off of the machine and tape it down, you can. McDreamy hates it when I do that. He really, really does. So I just tuck it very carefully. You do not want to you know, bash your hoop around or lift it very high, keep it down low. But because we're using water soluble stabilizer, we can see where the fabric is. And I just find this easier. But if you want to use um, tape or anything like that, that's fine. So now we're going to put the backing on and um, then we're going to trim it off. And so the back will look just as pretty. So remember to put the backing fabric face down. That's the important part of it. And this will be our last trim and we will be moving on to the final satin stitches, which should be awesome. So I changed my mind last minute. And green. Don, can we go back to the desk? Yes. So I thought I would, oops, my thread thread there all over the place. I just pulled down my pile of thread scraps. And purple green makes it look like it's glowing, Sharon says. Kind of, yeah, that's why I left it. I mean, I will uh, put in a, a bobbin that I normally use and make sure he stitches out properly. But all I would have to do is I'd probably clean out the bobbin and the bobbin case a little bit just to make sure try that if that didn't work then i would probably tighten up the bobbin uh tension just like a quarter turn and see if that's better and uh just work that way it's uh i wouldn't keep tightening the bobbin i would then go up to the top thread and check the tension on it. That's how I would do it. But because it's like a neon green and it's showing and it usually only shows just around the edges, it gives it a cool glow. So I kind of like it. Thanks, McDreamy, for not liking your tension. <laughs> Why not? It's a happy mistake. A happy mistake. You know, it happens. Mistakes happen. So that's going to look really good. We're going to have the outline, the outline here, I'm on the back, the outline for each um, coffin. So it's going to look good. So Don, back to the machine. My brother dream machine with bright green thread. So if you didn't change your bobbin to match, this is when you need to do it. I left the first one in anyways. I guess I could have done differently. But anyways, this is, this is when you need to change it. So we're going to do some satin stitches to finish this off. And I'm going to do it in my green and matching green bobbin. Everyone should be happy. I cha I remembered to wind a bobbin and I remembered to say when you should change it. I'm so happy. Oh, that looks fantastic. Oh yeah, nice connections. No need for a trim there. No need. That's gonna cover up the edges perfectly. I like how this one is coming together. Yep, there we go. Run around. Oh, it looks so good with the glowy green. What do you think, Don? I like it. Mm-hmm. It's quite the design. I, like cool 
I, w I was trying to keep it bright, and I think if you put this on your coffee table or on your for a candle, I think people would notice it and go, wow, where did you get that? So, yeah. I think it'd be cool. I really do like how it's turning out. I can't wait to see the back now that I've finally done it properly. Julie Pura, hello. Glad I made it here. Well, we're glad too. I love seeing all the familiar names every Saturday and Sunday. It just, we're all very happy drinking our coffee. Well, I'm not drinking coffee. And it's going to do the center, which I'm also leaving green. Um, if you wanted to change it around, that would be fine. That, you just have to stop the machine. My spider looks like he's squished because he's kind of on the edge of the star. So it looks a little white underneath. <laughs> Now, a little bit clunky because we're going through a lot of things, but it, the machines can do it. Look at all that fluffy stuff he didn't come off when I turned the hoop over. Uh, very fluffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that green. So the green, again, if people are wondering, it's neon green from, from Madeira. And I really like it. I have a neon orange and a neon pink. I haven't used the neon orange yet. All right, so now we're gonna do black. And what we need to do now, before we go any further, is to change the bobbin, but show you the back. Can you see that? Nice. Looking good. There's nothing wrong with making the back look just as pretty, so. I'm actually changing a bobbin. I think I need some music like dun dun na na or something. What kind of background music? Nothing. Nothing? You get nothing. Done. <laughs> not nice. <laughs> Who's fueling that? <laughs> he not nice. I'm telling your mom on you. No, don't do that. I do stuff like that. You I get me in trouble. Stop it. I know. Nope. <laughs> not going to stop it. I'm telling, I'm telling, definitely, definitely. Linda's following along nicely, but she's a little slow right now. She had to rewind a bobbin, or wind another bobbin. Wind another, well, good for you, Lynn. Well, it's okay, so you. She's going to backtrack a little bit and keep going. Yep, and you know the steps. I try to keep everything the same. It's just when to change your bobbin to match. And good for you winding a bobbin because I did it on her machine twice and I made a mess. So yay, Lynn. So now I'm going to have to do something else because I have that much green left. So black bobbin, black thread, final satin stitch going on now. Ooh, I'm so excited to see how this looks. Very pretty. Um, I really like it. It's Halloweeny. It's Halloweeny. It's about as Halloweeny as it gets. So this is all nicely connected and doing the zigzag because I like the zigzag. I probably could have skipped it on the small one because everything is squished down ni nicely. Maybe a little bit of banging. Um, these are very close together. And that's how I wanted them. So the green line and the black. So I think that's really cool. So in the small one, the orange is really bright. And then the purple and then the green, it makes it look like different fabrics. I kind of like that. So don't worry about the banging. It's just going around satin <laughs> stitches. Isabel says the bobbin squad is unemployed today. Yeah, <laughs> I win. I win the bobbin race. Yeah, just from teaching Lynn, and she asked me why. Why do you do it? I'm like, uh. so the back looks as good as the front, and she said how? Because I've never done it in all the videos that she watched, and I thought. Well, I gotta fix that. Yeah, so apologies. 
happy you are enjoying today's visit video. Yeah, we have fun. Oh, look how that sets it off with the black. Oh, I love this. Nice. That's pretty good. So, zigzaggy because it holds everything down. And look at that perfect finish. Even though I was a little bit uh, sloppy, but not perfect for the trimming. Ah, a little drink there. It's dry. Are we supposed to have a nice day today, Don? Yep. 23 degrees and sunny. 23 degrees. Lovely. The hounds will like being... We call them, when they lie down outside, we call them hound flowers. They're kind of growing in the grass. It's cute. So, where can I get the design? Carolyn says, I joined late. You can always uh, rewind. Thank you, um, Misha, for putting up the link. You guys rock, because I can't do any of that while I'm stitching. Um, you can always rewind as well and go back to the beginning. The black really emphasizes the coffin shape. It does on this one. But you know what? I find not so much on the big one. Not so much. I love the way the purple and the green make the inside orange stand out. So, yeah, the black doesn't do that much so on the bigger because, one. It might be because of the, uh, your background. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I I love the way this is turning out. What done? So I like the fussy cutting idea of like the pumpkins. I think you would have to do it on the larger one for a better effect. The black looks great. I'm quiet today sort of still snoozing. Yeah, I know how you feel. That's fine. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining in, of course. That shouldn't take too long. Oh yeah, we are looking good. I can't wait to see the back. I can't wait to see the back. It'll be good. Is there a zigzag stitch in that that will go automatically in Is there a what? Yeah, it's underlay. Oh, yeah, you can do zigzag underlay in most software. And if you can't find it, then you can take a copy of the satin stitch and reduce the density. Remember, there's no magic numbers on it. You just watch it and get a really nice matching satin stitch. But there should be, for underlay, there should be a zigzag. So you can just add underlay. I'm kind of old school, and I, I kind of do it the old way. I don't manually do the zigzags, but I just do it a little bit differently because I'm also making the connections. So I do one, and then I do the running stitch so they connect, because I think this is awesome. It's a well-connected design, and it's just a dream to stitch out. Did you make it anybody? Uh, I did not. A lot of people are saying it'd be nice. Eight by eight. All right, I can add that. So if you nine by nine, it's just nine and a half is a little too large for them. And eight, eight by eight, eight, by eight is eight. pretty standard. So if you have purchased the set, this set, I'll let you guys know in the OML Embroidery University group, and you can re-download it, and I'll add the um eight by eight in it because you're right that is a good size and i don't mind i want more people to be stitching and being happy so don't download anything until i've fixed it and i'll do it directly after this so yeah i'll the eight by eight. if they're doing the small one they can grab it now right or it's all in one all package in one. Okay. yeah Sorry. i'm trying to i'm trying to make it so i have a little bit of fabric money but also 
so a lot of people can get them as well. So, yeah, I'm trying. I'm doing my best on that. It works. You're welcome. See, you know what? Just mention stuff politely like that. Because um, everything I do is for you guys. So you will like the videos and, and have what you need. Should I wait for the 8x8? Yes, I'll be doing it. It takes me a few minutes to package it. I gotta check it and make sure everything works and then change it into all the different formats and then do it that way. Anita says thanks for doing the 8x8. She's gonna purchase it now. Maybe she should wait. Either or, you'll just have to download it again to get the 8x8. Right. So, if you want to get it now, it's not there. The 8x8 is not there. I will let you guys know in the OML Embroidery University Facebook troop. Maybe an hour when this is done. Maybe an hour. Or you can say by noon for sure. And I'm not 100% sure if I update the file that you guys download if it sends you guys an email anyone who's purchased it I'm not sure if the website does that um, but it would be groovy if it did it's very pretty like, I had to see it up close yeah do you like it yeah I think it's rather love, stunning love yep this is why I love Halloween. Nice and bright. Thank you very much. And so. The question is, why don't we have flowers like that in our backyard? Oh, but we will. <laughs> we will. You could put um, you could put a little bit of vinyl, iron-on vinyl to protect it on the front and the back. Or what we call like Mac tack. I'm not sure how well that would stick. And um, glue a stick to it and make a Halloween decoration. Oh yeah, anything goes with these. Nice. Um, people say, why do you always make mug rugs? Well, it's a good way of teaching in the hoop, first of all. Second of all, you don't have to make a mug rug. If you skip... Um, you know, the a lot of the stitches, like the placement and all that kind of stuff, you don't need batting. You can put it on a shirt. You could put this on a bag. I mean, you still have the applique. You, you can do that just fine. You could do anything with it. It's very, very versatile. You just have to think outside the embroidery box. I am working on the podcast. So I'm trying to find a relatively inexpensive service for that because apparently that's what you need to do. Um, so it doesn't take up too much time, I guess, to spread it around and load it into um, iTunes. So Mug Rugs taught me so much and I'm still learning. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jill. It's awesome. It's fun. That's what I think. Barbara says, so glad you did the 8x8. She's going to order it later. I wasn't sure that she liked, liked it, so she saw you sketching it. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it can be interpreted different ways. I find it stunning. I wasn't sure about the coffins, like what people would think of that. Um, but I think it's also a Dresden flower, so... Ready for that happy dance, my boy. Oh, and there's an extra outline for no reason. So I'll fix that as well. Oh, no, it's going... Never mind. Is that happy noise? Yeah, it was the happy noise. It's just the... the I thought it was an extra outline. Go back to the desk, Don. Desk is up. So I really like how this turned out. Ready for the back? You ready, Don? Ready. Boom. Ooh, nice. You know what? It matches. That it matchy matchy. That looks really good. It does for look the good. back. I mean there's more details in this one, 
but that looks really good. See, that is another option if you want your design to be, you know, a little more simple, then skip the details. Uh, I am okay with people skipping stuff. Uh, I think it helps. So look, I've got big and small. It's and reversible. Well, that one is. This one, see, this is what it looks like on the larger one. It would look good if it matched. Um, I really like the bright colors. I am loving the green. Uh, I think it would be perfect. So your next and final step here is to just kind of cut it out. And you can either take a little bit of water and uh, get rid of the edges or soak the whole thing so that you know if someone spills some water on it or something it won't get all kind of wrinkly and sticky because the water soluble stabilizer is still in between everything that's always best right just to yes soak the whole thing. yep um you can run it under warm water and then just throw it in a bowl that's what i do i have a special bowl upstairs that um is only used for embroidery believe it or not in the kitchen and it's just i fill it up with warm ish water and uh just soak it and rinse it out i'm really happy with how this turned out and look this is what some one of the testers did awesome. put them together like that and you know what you could put a button there and sew them together and that would be a beautiful like um, Halloween design. You could poke a hole through here and hang it up. The back of mine looks crappy, but you could do that. I think that looks awesome. So, okay, give me a little bit of time. I will announce it and post a link in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group. If you haven't joined the group, join away. That's where all the fun happens. Um, and it's a backup to the channel. So if you have any questions and I will get that done for you guys. So yeah, feel free to, to make, um, requests. Um, I don't think of everything I try to, but I don't, but you're right. Absolutely. Eight by eight size would be fantastic. So I love this. I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. And uh, thanks for sewing along with me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye, everyone.